Hello everyone, welcome back to our Porsche restoration video series. I thought I'd upload some uh, quick video this morning on pulling these fenders off and fitting a new gas tank, what we ran into. Um, so if you're pulling your fenders off, this is a pretty easy job. Um, I didn't even have to pull the wheels off to do this. You just want to turn your wheels so you can get a, uh, a 10 millimeter socket on the inside of the fender. Inside, doing these guys here. These are going to be from the inside of the fender. I probably need a six or eight inch uh, extension. I just use a quarter inch drive. Uh, they're not tight, be easy to undo. And then these ones, these bolt on from this side. But none of this is tight. None of these bolts are tight at all. You can get in there and pop those loose. The reason they're not tight is because they use a, uh, a sealant between the fender and the body here. And the sealant. Um, it's not really like a glue or a uh, uh, like a caulking type situation. It's almost like a modern plumber's putty, which just kind of crumbles as you take it apart. The driver's side is just a little bit more difficult to get off of there, uh, but not too bad. You're just going to have some some areas where, on this one here, this one uh, was really covered up. My bolts were covered with uh, the undercoating, so I couldn't get the socket over the top of the head to undo it. I had to scrape away. You can see how loaded up it was. There's pretty thick around the, the head of that bolt. You might have some of that to do, but other than that, it should come right off. About an hour and a half though, get these guys off of there. Uh, and then the gas tank. So I wanted to uh, get a gas tank and get it fitted in here before I pull the front of this car out. Um, I've read some stuff online where some of the guys have had problems fitting these or they're bumping into something and they had a grind or notch something in there. Um, so probably depending on the year model of your car, and what's going on with each one, you might have something to do. However, on this particular one, um, no problem. It fit right in there and it fit very, very, very well. Let's see, it drops right down in where it's supposed to. And it fits pretty much like this all the way around 360 degrees. Um, this one's made by Dansk. Uh, aftermarket gas tank, but real nice quality. Uh, got this on Parts Geek, uh, less than $300. Um, shipped it to me. I had it one day. Unbelievable. You could have thrown that thing out of an airplane. It was wrapped so well. So if you're looking for a gas tank, I would recommend Parts Geek. Um, you're going to be real satisfied. Uh, the difference between this gas tank and my original is going to be this uh, vent tube. It's a little bit bigger. It's about a half inch. You know, my original, it's about, um, well, maybe like a quarter inch. And then this, this bubble part sticking up, my original tank was a complete round, whereas this one has a chamfered front edge. But I just didn't want to take any chances trying to restore that old tank. It was too far gone. The seam had rusted out uh, from just sitting for so many years with gas in it. Um, but this is real simple, real simple fit in here. You got one clamp down screw um, then you're going to have a sealant underneath it so not too much to worry about there but if you're going to trade out your front end probably wouldn't be a bad idea to fit this before you pull that out of there just so you know what it should fit like when you start mocking up your new uh, your new pan in there so my new front pan parts this guy here so we're going to take this edge the outer edge here and this is all spot welded on the car and we're going to drill those out rather than to cut rather than to cut the uh, original one out i just want to make sure that the gas tank fits here before we throw it in the new situation and have some different things going on um okay so we got fenders we got the new gas tank and now we're up on a dolly my temporary dolly situation i borrowed this dolly from a friend and just modified it to get the car up off the ground. However, I'm going to need to build a little bit bigger dolly to take this uh, and distribute the weight more evenly. Um, probably 48 by by 43 is about what the right size is going to be. You're going to want to be at least 12 and a half inches off the ground. And then on the front here, you're going to need to notch out uh, wherever it's sitting down on your dolly. You're going to need to notch that for that tunnel running through there so you're not pushing on it. But uh, I just need to get a little bit heavier duty one with some bigger wheels. And that way I can roll it uh, to and from the, the blasting area. 
So from here, we're going to take these brakes off, and we're going to pull some of these uh, suspension parts off, lighten her up a little bit, and uh, do the final strip down. Once we get it finally stripped, then we're going to build a real simple uh, home-built style rotisserie. Very, very simple concept. Um, show you how to do that and give you some measurements too. So uh, measurements are a real important thing on a dolly. So when you roll the car, it's not actually touching the ground. You want to get it as close to the ground as you can get it, but you don't actually want to be uh, leaning on the ground at any point. Looks like it's going to be approximately 33 or 34 inches off the ground. So there it is. Um, okay, so I just wanted to uh, close up today. I've had uh, uh, quite a few people contact me since I've started uploading videos on this project, um, inquiring what I sell the car, what are my intentions with the car, uh, do I know where to find a car, things like that. So I thought I would just, you know, for whatever it's worth, just give you my thoughts on what to do if you're looking to buy a car to restore and kind of how I would go about it. Um, Haggerty kind of defines your restoration project as a level one car, level two, level three, and so on. Um, with this restoration, we're trying to get or trying to achieve as close to a level one as we can get it. I think we can come pretty close, even though we're doing it out of our house. Um, some of these cars, if you were to go online and try and buy one, um, they've been painted, they've been slightly restored, some of some have been modified um, the do-it-yourselfer let's say you want to do this yourself you don't want to take it in and have it done um, if it was me the car I'm looking for sight unseen let's say I can't go see the car I just want to buy it um, the car I would want to buy would be the most complete car in its original condition even if the parts are all worn out um, a lot of the aftermarket parts aren't really the quality uh, that they look like in the magazines and online, you get them. You get them here. Start bolting them on, and, and really, most of them got to go back. They're they're just terrible. Um, but if you don't have the original part to compare it with, as far as how it fits, how it should look, um, then you really are going to have a difficult path uh, to get back to the beginning. Um, so even if your car is all beat up and uh, and worn down, and all the parts are just worn out, um, it's a good map back to how to get there. Uh, the car I would buy would be the one that hasn't been painted recently. Um, the guy's not trying to sell it. Oh, I got a pile of receipts. I had this done and that done, the other thing done. Um, if there was me, I would probably stay away from that car, even though in the photos it probably looks better. Probably looks like, wow, this one looks like it's a pretty good car. Problem with that is, it's if it's sort of been done, then it hasn't been done properly. Uh, only way to get these cars to get them where you want them is take them completely apart and put them completely back together. Kind of a halfway's job is almost like ruining the car. And then you're paying way too much for the car because he's just painted it, he's just put some chrome wheels on it and, and uh, some interior carpet and, and so on. But um, you want to get down to the bones. It's really, it's really there is where the value is. So for me, I would not buy a car that was sort of fooled around with. I would buy one that's just clapped out and looks really bad. Um, also for me, uh, I don't know that I would buy a restored car, um, only because I do this and I know uh, what can be overlooked and things that uh, are just covered over. So, you know, some of these cars now commanding strong six-figure prices and uh, when I see pictures online of a car, it's got a nice paint job, got the wheels, all the chromes put back, you open the doors, it's got new carpet. You throw it up on the on the rack, and you look underneath. It's still got all this original undercoating on there. In my mind, that car is just ruined. Uh, you're gonna pay strong six-figure territory for it. Um, it's not really done complete. It's not finished properly, and will never be if you're gonna spend that kind of money uh, for the car. So, uh, good luck with the car shopping. Uh, there are plenty of them out there, uh, but I would. I would put my money and my value into the worn down car. I'd pay more for that than I would uh, a guy trying to sell it with some paint on there, some new seats and uh, a stack of receipts. The more the car has been fooled with, the harder it's gonna be to get back to the original situation. Um, 
So good luck with that. Uh, all the parts in the world out there to bring them back, but it's very difficult to get them back to their original shape if most of the original things are missing. So that's just my, uh, my thoughts on buying a car uh, for whatever it's worth. Uh, my, my tires are pulled off here. I just clean these up. This guy here, uh, this looks like one of, this is a Cinture Auto, but this is not the original tire. This is a 185. I think this car came with 165s. That was in the spare. And they're in pretty good condition, but they're not really good enough um, to use on the restoration. So I will be replacing the wheels um, on this project. Uh, for now, the wheel's going to be secret. <laughs> but uh, we're just going to do a couple things here to, to just spruce it up a bit. Um, not lose any value or try to tear the car up. We're just, we're just going to clean it up a little bit. Um, but we are going to retain the original wheels uh, because this is part of the value of the car. These are all date coded, all has original chrome. But when we do everything else, they're not quite going to uh, measure up as far as show and shine we'll keep them but we won't use them however we will use them uh, once we get this thing back off a of dolly again when we start putting it back together um, so there it is uh, good luck with the fenders and the gas tank situation if you have any questions on that um, please feel free to shoot me a comment and if you're looking for a car good luck i would just go for the most original one you can i would pay more for that no matter how it looked, than, uh, than one that has some paint covering everything up. Well, thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you next time.